Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install 10 Linux distributions on one a USB drive. Now, obviously, uh, the number of distributions that you can get on one USB drive depends on the size of your USB drive. I am using a 128 gigabyte USB drive. You can use this process to install as many as can fit on the USB drive that you have. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up a web browser and we're going to go to www.ventoy.net and you'll get to this page here and the first thing we're going to do is click on downloads and then we're going to click on this windows zip option here click i accept and then click download latest version ventoy will now download in the top right corner you see the download is complete so now we can close the web browser what we're going to do is set up a USB drive using Ventoy and what Ventoy allows you to do is drag and drop distributions onto your USB drive and you can have as many on there as your USB drive will fit. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Windows Explorer, we're going to go to the downloads option and we're going to double click on the Ventoy that we downloaded previously and I'm going to do extract all and extract. And now Ventoy will open in a new window. So we'll double click on that folder there. And we're going to click on this Ventoy to disk option. A message will appear asking whether you're sure. And the answer to that is yes. We can now close these windows down to make it clearer. Make sure you've got a USB drive plugged in. And make sure there's nothing on there you want to keep because this will clear out any data that's on the drive. So when you see this screen, you want to pick the device that you want to install Ventoy onto and so in my case it's this 120 gigabyte integral portable SSD and what I'm going to do is click install. It tells you that the device will be formatted and all the data will be lost. Uh, click yes to continue. It does a double check to make sure you're absolutely sure you want to uh, wipe all the data off the disk and this is your last chance so I'm going to click yes. So now, congratulations, Ventoy has successfully been installed to the device. So the next step is to actually get some Linux distributions to put onto the drive. Now the best Linux distributions to put onto a drive like this are live versions of Linux distributions. And the, your starting point should be distrowatch.com. And DistroWatch has lots of information about um, most of the Linux distributions there are available. But you'll see down the right hand side there's this ranking thing. So what you want to do is go down here and just work out the ones that you want to put onto the drive. And you can do that by clicking into the distribution and reading the information and seeing is this the sort of thing that you want to use. So MX Linux would be a good option. So what we can do is we can right click open a new tab and then we can click download and then you can choose which version you want to put on there so in this case I'm going to go for the XFCE version and then that will start downloading and I can of course install the KDE version as well because I've got plenty of space on the drive so I could click on KDE and that will download as well Using this method, I can try lots of different distributions out. For instance, I could choose the latest Pop! OS. I can choose Ubuntu and Zorin. So the other distributions I am going to put on this drive, I'm going to put Kali on there. I'm going to put Puppy on there. Now, Puppy has lots of different versions, so we could do a couple of these. We're going to do the Bookworm version of Puppy, which is based on Debian. And we're going to do the Ubuntu version. And the Noble version is a 32-bit version. So if you've got a 32-bit machine, you need to install a 32-bit version of Puppy. And we'll do one more. I think we'll do something like Q4 OS. 
and you definitely want to go for the live CDs, not the install CDs. And now all we need to do is wait for all these downloads to finish and we should have 10 distributions to install onto our USB drive. Now that all of the distributions have downloaded, what we can do is we can open up a Windows Explorer. So I've opened this one up here. I'm going to snap to the left like this. And I've got another one for Ventoy. I'm going to snap that to the right like that. And all I'm going to do is drag and drop the distros into that folder. So Now that's only nine items. You might wonder what the tenth one is. Well, I've got a Linux Mint down here. We'll also drag over to make the tenth. Okay, so all of those files are now copied. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave the USB drive plugged in and we're going to reboot the computer and then I'll show you the Ventoy screen. So we're going to reboot the computer and you might need to press the relevant boot key to bring up the boot menu for the USB drive. So in my case it's F7, so I've done that. And I need to pick the USB device, which is this one here. And you can see I've got a list of distributions that I can boot into. So let's boot into one. We'll boot into Ubuntu. And you can see I can try or install Ubuntu. So here we are. We can choose our language and accessibility and your keyboard layout in this case i'm going to go for uk and it gives you an option to install or try ubuntu so i'm just going to do try and there we are we're in ubuntu so what can you do with the live image of ubuntu well you can use any of these applications so you've got firefox you've got uh, libreoffice you've got rhythmbox so all of the applications should work and a good reason to use something like Ubuntu in a live uh, environment is one you can test it before you install it so you can test your hardware works like your Wi-Fi you can test your printing you can test Bluetooth so you can see if it suits you before you install um, you can also use all the applications the only thing is when you reboot anything you install will disappear because it's a live image it only runs in memory if you create any files in something like LibreOffice, for instance, you'll need to save them in a device like a hard drive, external hard drive, a USB drive, somewhere like that, so that it's saved properly. Because when you reboot, that file will disappear if you just store it into the home folder or within the live environment. So reasons for using a live environment like this. One, try out the hardware. Two, you can use it for troubleshooting. Um, for instance, if you've got a problem with your actual PC and you need to get the files off quickly, you can open up the file explorer here and you should be able to navigate through all your folders. So for instance, if I had a problem with this drive, I can navigate down to it and then I've got access to put it somewhere else. So if your Windows is broken, for instance, you can go into your Windows folder and copy all the stuff off of there uh, before um, doing anything else. So you can guarantee that your files are safe. So that's a good use of a live environment. So if you want to try one of the other Linux distributions that are on the drive, you can click up here, click here, and then click restart. You get all the message about removing the medium. Again, you have to press the relevant function key to get into the boot menu. And again, you have to choose the USB device. And this time, let's try booting into Kali. Now you can see it says there's live system with USB persistent. We're not going to do that. You have to do extra setup for that. And uh, so I recommend reading the Kali documentation to get that going. And you probably wouldn't use Ventoy in that scenario. So here we are, we're in a live version of Kali Linux. Now, uh, why would you use a live version of Kali Linux? Well, Kali provides a full set of penetration testing tools and tools for security purposes. So you might use this if you were going to a site and you were going to test the penetration test their site. Uh, it saves having it installed on an actual computer. You could actually just plug it into a computer that's already there. 
So that's Kali Linux. Um, we'll reboot again. We'll try one of the others out. Now, if you want to change the boot order so it goes directly into the USB, you can go into your BIOS settings and you can change the boot order. So in this case, you can see OpenSUSE is my default option. So I can change that and I can make it my external SSD and then we can make OpenSUSE the second option and then we can make Windows the third option. And now if I press F4 to save, it should now go straight into Ventoy every time, every time I plug in this USB device. And here we are back at the Ventoy menu and we can try something like Puppy Linux out. Here we are in Bookworm version of Puppy Linux. It's based on Debian. Uh, now all the tools here are lightweight. It's not the most easy to use system, but because it all run, all designed to run in memory, uh, it's everything has a low footprint. So you can run applications quite easily. In theory, you can save the file um, and make it persistent. Um, I haven't managed to get that working yet, but it's something I will continue working on. Uh, it will work if you don't use Ventoy, if you just use a normal USB drive. Um, but uh, yeah, this is Puppy Linux. We'll do one final one just to finish off the video and we'll go for the Q4 OS. Again, another good lightweight Linux distribution. Perfect for troubleshooting if you've got a problem with your Windows or any other operating system you have installed. You can run this off a live USB and uh, then copy the files that are broken. And so here is the live version of Q4 OS. Now the point of this video wasn't to highlight the distributions that I put onto the Ventoy drive. The, the point of this video was to show you how easy it is to create a live USB with any Linux distribution that you want on it. So basically you install Ventoy on it once and then you just drag and drop the ISO onto the drive. And as long as you don't format the drive, you can keep doing that with any Linux distribution you want. And it doesn't have to just be Linux. You can put um, React OS, you can put BSD, you can put other ISO images on there as well. So I think we'll leave it there. Uh, that's the end of the video. Uh, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.